there is a demonic plan against you. They have been hired to destroy you. But I want to let you know that God has told me to tell you that you are not the type of person that runs away. Did you know that the anxiety, the doubt, the discouragement, the fear, the things, the problems that we go through in life, they are just a distraction from the devil. They have been hired against you to make you run away, to make you stop believing, to make you stop trusting God so that you can lose out on all the blessings and the promises that God has for you. But you're not a type of person to run away. Even though you might say, nah, I want to run away. Or even though you might say, no, but I'm backsliding right now. I have ran away. No, listen. You're not the type of person that's going to run away because the devil wants to make you run away so that then he can mock you and humiliate you. But pay attention to this verse. Look what the Bible says here. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 11 through 14. In the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah is a man that works for the king. And Nehemiah hears about Jerusalem and he hears about how all the walls are torn down. So he gets a desire in his heart. He gets a fire burning in his belly and he wants to go and rebuild the city. That's what you and I want to do. We want to live a life right with the Lord. We want to rebuild our spiritual life by trusting Jesus Christ. We want to obey the Lord. We want to obey the word of God. We want to obey the convictions of the Holy Spirit, right? That's what we want to do. That's what those rebuilding of the walls represent. It represents a spiritual infrastructure being rebuilt, the city being rebuilt. But every time you try to move forward, the devil is also going to try to move against you. That's what his name means. It means the adversary, the accuser, the opposer. He's always going to try to oppose you. So Nehemiah goes back to Jerusalem. He wants to rebuild the walls. But then there's two men, Sambalat and Tobias, that rise up against him. And at first, they try to distract them with fears and threats and sending death threats to him. But he does this. He says, hey, everybody, they're against us, but we're going to keep working. Everybody says, yeah, we're going to keep working. They're scared, but they're going to keep working. And then he says, look. But as you work, continue to work with your spear and your sword in your hand, your sword on the side, and you continue to work with one hand, but you're ready to grab the spear or the sword with the other hand. So Sambalat and Tobias, the ones that were hired against them to try to stop the work, to try to stop the rebuilding of the walls, when they saw that they couldn't scare him, they try to use another technique. And this technique is the one that I want you to pay attention to. They hired someone to speak a false prophecy against Nehemiah. This prophet dressed herself as if she was a prophetess of God. She acted like if she was speaking for the Lord, but she spoke nothing but fear and anxiety to the life of Nehemiah. But glory to God that Nehemiah sees this. And this is what I want you to pay attention to in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 11 through 14. Remember, this is a false prophet. Tells him, hey, let's go to the temple of the Lord. I got a prophecy to tell you from God. And listen to this. The spirit of the world and the spirit of the devil is always going to continually try to speak lies to you. Make you doubt. Make you live in fear. Make you live in anxiety. Make you live in depression. Make you doubt your salvation. Make you doubt, man, I've sinned too many times. God's not going to deal with me any longer. He's not going to keep forgiving me. The devil just wants to make you doubt the promises of God. But if you're a person that has received Jesus, the Son of God, in your life, if you placed your faith in what he did on the cross and his resurrection on the third day, if you've asked him to become your Savior and to forgive you for your sins, if you're that type of person, God is with you. And Jesus said, I will never leave you. Pay attention because these are not my words. These are the words of Jesus. And Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you unto the ends of the earth. And the Apostle Paul, a man who used to persecute the church, a man who used to persecute you Christians when he surrendered his life to Jesus he wrote these scriptures in the Bible for me and for you because it was inspired by God he said there's no height there's no depth there's no demon there's no angel there's no circumstance that can separate you from the love of God why why will nothing separate you from the love of God because you have trusted in his son Jesus Christ the savior of the world the savior of your life and the Bible says, the word of God says that the good work that he started in you, he's going to be faithful to complete it. So pay attention to what Nehemiah 6, 11 through 14 says. They have been hired against you. These lies, these fears, these anxious feelings, they have been hired against you to try to stop you from serving the Lord and seeing the promises of God. Because I want to let you know, you're going to see the promises of God. I want to let you know, you're going to see the blessings of God. You're going to see the transformation of the Lord in your life. But these anxieties, these fears, these worries, these problems, they have been hired against you to try to stop you. 
and Nehemiah sees this. Pay attention. This is very powerful. He says this when the person is prophesying falseness against him. Nehemiah says, but I said, should such a man as I run away? That's what you need to remember. And that's what you need to say always. Should such a man as I run away? So such a person as I run away? What does he mean by that? What does he mean by such a man as I run away? Not because he's the tallest or the strong. No, because he's trusted in the Lord. Because he's backed up by God. You got to tell yourself the same thing. You might not be the tallest, the fastest, the strongest. You might not be the most handsome. You might not be none of those things. But that's not why we don't run away. We don't run away. Not because it depends on us or on our strengths. No, we don't want to run away because God is backing us up. Because God is our defender. And that's what I want to let you know. God is backing you up. God is your defender. Should such a person like you run away? No. In Jesus' mighty name, you're not going to run away. You're not going to stop. You're not going to stop trusting the Lord. You're not going to stop having faith. Why? Because God is backing you up. And Nehemiah, when he's hearing these false prophecies, these, these things trying to make him filled with fear and anxiety and doubt and depression and with desperation and hopelessness, that's what these false prophecies are trying to influence him to feel. He says, I'm not going to run away. And remember why? Because God is backing me up. And greater is he, the Bible says, who is in you than the one in the world who is against you. You're not going to run away because God is backing you up. He said, should such a man as I run away? And what man such as I could go into the temple and live? He says this, I will not go in. In other words, I will not go in and hide myself and run away. He says, I will not go in. And then look at this. When he stands in faith, when he stands in boldness, he gets a revelation. He says, and I understood and I saw that God had not sent him, but he had pronounced the prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. Who hired this false prophet? The enemies of Nehemiah, Sambalat and Tobias. Who does Sambalat and Tobias represent for me and you today? It represents the devil and it represents the ways of the world. The devil and the ways of the world have hired these false prophecies, these false statements against you. It wants to fill you with fear, anxiety, depression, discouragement. Want to make you feel hopeless. Want to make you feel desperation. These feelings, these thoughts, these demonic thoughts, because they're lies from the devil. They're darts from the devil. They have been hired against you by the devil himself, by his demonic principalities, by his demonic powers. These fear, these doubts, this discouragement, this hopelessness has been hired against you to try to stop you from serving the Lord. But just like Nehemiah got a revelation, I, in the name of Jesus, I believe you're getting a revelation right now that those are just doubts. Those are just discouragements. Those are just lies from the devil. And they have been hired against you to try to make you stop following the Lord. But look what Nehemiah says. For this purpose, he was hired. That I should be afraid. What does the devil want to do? Wants to make you scared. Wants to make you be afraid. Why? Because when somebody is afraid, when somebody's scared, they lose strength. They lose focus. While we're serving the Lord, as we're living for the Lord, as we're walking on this narrow road, this straight road, the devil is going to try to discourage you and try to make you lose focus and try to make you get distracted. When somebody's about to shoot a free throw and it's a championship game and a basketball game and somebody's about to shoot a free throw, the worst thing they can be is nervous. They need to be cool and they need to be collective and they need to be concentrated. But have you ever seen the crowd when somebody's shooting a free throw in a playoff game or in a championship game? What do they have? They have those tubes filled with air, right? And they're making noise and they're yelling and they're waving them and they're hitting them together. And, ah! and the whole arena is against that one person. The whole arena is against that one person shooting that free throw. The whole arena is yelling, ah, trying to distract them. I want to let you know the same thing. That all of hell's arena is trying to distract you from trusting God. And you might say, wow, all of hell's arena? How can I compete against that? <laughs> the book of James chapter 4 verse 7 says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. What's going to give you victory over that demonic arena? What's going to give you victory over those demonic plans that have been hired against you? That fear, that doubt, that anxiety, that hopelessness, that desperation. What's going to give you victory is not our own strength. It's not my own strength. It's not your own strength. What's going to give us victory is when we trust in the Lord. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my strong tower. He is the firm foundation. And I stand on him. All of the ground is sinking sand. But he is a solid ground. I'm going to trust in him. 
So, so Nehemiah understands this and he says, For this purpose he was hired, that I should be afraid and act in a way and sin. So that he can give me a bad name in order to taunt me. He says he just wants to make fun of me. You know what the devil wants to do? The devil wants to taunt you and mock you. The devil wants to distract you and make you live in fear so that you can run away and so that you can go live in desperation and hopelessness. And then your whole life, if you listen to that, your whole life the devil's going to tell you, huh, I thought you were a Christian. I thought you used to go to church. I thought you used to pray. I thought you used to read the Bible. I thought you used to fast. Weren't you such a little holy roller? Weren't you such a Christian? The devil just wants you to run away so that he can mock you. And Nehemiah understood that. I'm not going to let him mock me. I'm not going to let him punk me. I'm not going to let him make me run away. He just wants to make fun of me. No. I'm going to stand right here on Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep walking forward. I'm going to keep trusting the Lord. He's the one that's giving me the strength to rebuild these walls, to rebuild my life. He's the one doing it, and I'm not going to run away. Remember, the devil just wants to mock you. He wants to make you run away so that he can make fun of you. Let's keep reading. Look what he says here in verse 14. But do me a favor right before I read verse 14. If you're not subscribed, subscribe so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. If you're finding value in this video, if this video is encouraging you, do me a favor right now. Press the subscribe button and turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. So let's keep reading. Remember, they have been hired to destroy you. It's a demonic plan. Look what Nehemiah says. And this is where the scripture says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you, you shall condemn it. That is an inheritance for those who love the Lord. Look what verse 14 says. Remember Tobiah. This is Nehemiah's prayer. Remember Tobiah and Sambalat, O my God, according to these things that they have did, and also the prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. Nehemiah says, Lord, look at them. Lord, look at them. Remember Sambalat. Remember Tobiah. And remember the prophetess Noadiah. They just wanted to make me scared. They want to make me scared, Lord. Remember them. I want to let you know that the Lord is going to remember the fears, the doubts, the discouragements, the depressions, the hopelessness, the desperation. Those things that have been hired against you, sent by the devil, sent by the demonic arena. They have been sent to your life to distract you, to stop you, to make you live in fear. I want to let you know that God has his eye on those things. And God is going to give you the victory and you're going to look back and you're going to taunt those things. And you're going to say, thank you, Lord, because the devil thought he had me. Thank you, Lord, because fear thought it had me. Thank you, Lord, because anxiety, depression, hopelessness, desperation. Lord, those problems thought they had me. Thank you, Lord, because look, you've given me victory over all those things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, it's all a distraction. The devil wants to make you run away. But do you know what happened in the case of Nehemiah? Nehemiah stood firm through the threats, through the fears, through the discouragements. Nehemiah stood firm and the walls were rebuilt and the city was rebuilt and the temple was rebuilt and the nation was rebuilt. Do you know what's going to happen when you stand firm? Your mind is going to be rebuilt. Your heart is going to be rebuilt. Your spirit is going to be rebuilt. Your emotions are going to be rebuilt. When you stand firm, God is going to finish the good work in your life. Remember, don't run away because the devil just wants to taunt you, wants to mock you. Stand firm in Jesus' mighty name. Stand firm on what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross and on his resurrection on the third day. Stand firm in that. Stand firm in the promises of God. And also... You know what's going to help you? Have Christian fellowship. And I'm not talking about Christian fellowship. People who call themselves Christians. No, no, no. Hang around people who love the Lord and who want to honor the Lord. People whose lives belong to the Lord. Hang around people like that because they're going to be a great encouragement. Nehemiah was that person for many of those people. When the devil was trying to distract the nation, Nehemiah would encourage them. Go to church. Have Christian fellowship. It's also going to be a great help in your life. But if you want to stand firm in the Lord... If you've been going through these problems and now you're understanding, man, they've just been sent by the devil in his demonic arena. And if you want victory and if you want to continue to trust the Lord, I want to invite you. Repeat this prayer of faith. Repeat this prayer of trusting God. Say this. Say, Father God, I come to your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. 
and all my faults. Jesus, now I see that they have been hired against me. All those problems, the anxieties, the fears, the doubts, they have just been hired against me to make me run away to try and taunt me. Jesus, but I'm standing on you. The solid rock, the firm foundation. Jesus, fill me with strength. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I want to let you know if you make that declaration of faith, if you make that prayer, God is going to start to strengthen you and remind you of his word. And what you got to do is believe it because you have the victory. I God bless you. I hope this video was a great encouragement to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, go down at the bottom of the screen, press the subscribe button, turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. If you found value in this video, if this video was an encouragement to your life, do me that favor. This is a growing channel and press the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video specifically, you can do so by a feature at the bottom of the screen called Super Thanks. Those are always a great blessing to my life. Those are always greatly appreciated. Again, it's at the bottom of your screen and it's called Super Thanks. Those are a great blessing to my life. And check out the link in my description. It's called Channel Memberships for channel member only videos and channel member only lives that are archived on my channel for members only. Click the link in my description to join channel memberships. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. And before you click off, watch one of these other videos. I pray and I hope that they encourage your life.